Guys, I'm back, and uh, I want to first start by thanking the USPS for taking such good care of this package, as they so often do. We have Survival Box here, courtesy of Jason. Jason is, <coughs> excuse me, one of the greatest all-time supporters of this channel. Um, Patreon member, longtime Patreon member, and... Um, before that, just great dude sending things over to look at and and just being an all-around cool guy. So thank you, Jason. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry that the delivery service couldn't do their job correctly, but um, this is exactly as I received this box. So we're going to hope that everything is in this box properly. But this should be survival boxes for March 2023. And let's get into it and take a look. So, Jason is still getting the knife of the month. And that's pretty cool of him. Okay. Looks like we've got a, a karambit. Now, I'm telling you, all of these knives of the month, I, they, I'm, they're coming straight out of a factory in, in Pakistan somewhere or something. Um, you can find all of these things on like Amazon and eBay for like some price that's ridiculous. Um, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna comment on that further. Uh, but he likes it, so cool. The knife of the month is a separate purchase from the box itself. Ooh, I actually like this camouflage pattern. Um, anyway, what is this? Is this like a Tyvek camouflage suit? We'll find out. Um, so, <laughs> this is a great question we're gonna cover. Um, so, this is a Seabra, didn't we just have, oh, it's volume two, at least they acknowledge it's volume two. So anyway, the knife of the month is separate from the rest of the box. And the box here is Seaburn Volume 2. So that's cool because there are a lot of things that were left out. Um, interesting stuff in the box we're going to take a look at. So we've got one. We've got a roast beef MRE. We've got flat foot shoe covers, size large. And this is all kind of, I'm looking at it, this looks like civilian versions of, of stuff um, that, civilian version of military stuff, I should say. Got some gloves. Disposable nitrile gloves. These are not going to help you in most chemical, nuclear or biological emergencies. Well, maybe biological, we'll see. Survival box biological warfare tape. This is actually kind of cool. It's just tape, it's packing tape but it's printed with biological warfare on it. Wrap up that on a package going through the post office. That'll be good. Um, and then we've got a, looks like a gas mask or something. And we've got an MRE, we got two MREs. Might be the most useful part of this box. I don't know. Peter, you can sit in this box, but you can't keep this box. Come here, come here, handsome kitty. Come here, come here, cat. Okay, so. We got a C. Bernie box. C. Bernie. I say Bernie. There's an E in the military training. There's not an E here. It's just C. Burn. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items. Let's see. So here's one. Here's two, but it's like a two for one. So that's cool. Three. Four, five, six, and seven. And what's cool is, I mean, this is like a two for one, and this is a two for one. So I've got, I've got stuff. And we'll just go in order of the card and examine all the items as we uh, as we take them. And I know Jason has given me permission to like open stuff and look at stuff and see stuff. So we'll start right here with the overshoes, the rubber outsole. So this could be a no-brainer to some, and to some people it might need explanation. So, and in the military, we have rubber over boots. They're complete boots. They're very thick rubber. So if you're going into nuclear, biological, chemical warfare environment, you 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 have to put on, and they came in many iterations. They used to be like a flat thing that you would wrap up around your boot and then secure. 
And then at one point they were just basically like like an old galosh type thing that you'd slip on and have little elastic things. And now there's a newer one. But the point is, it's a chemical resistant, very thick boot over boot that can be decontaminated that you can wear in these can you know contaminated environments that protects and it goes up higher than your regular boot. And then you wear your chemical protective gear pants over it. So anything on you goes down over the over boot and not into your you know, um, but it's important because uh, if you think about, let's think about Chernobyl. If you've seen the Chernobyl miniseries, one of the things they had to do was destroy all of the firefighters, you know, in the hospital, all the first responders' clothes. And the basement of the Pripyat hospital is still an incredibly radioactive area because all the clothes are there. So you wear the, you wear over boots, and in this case, they're just shoe covers, I guess? disposable natural rubber. Now that's not great because natural rubber does not react well to many chemicals. There are things that will destroy natural rubber, but it's still better than nothing. It is better than nothing. However, um, this knife came from Craig in the Craig box. I love this knife. Um, this one of the things you got to remember is that we say it's better than nothing, but at the same time, you need to know what it does do because better than nothing sometimes can give you a very false sense of security and have you um, go into an air. Oh, it's two. This is a two for one also. Can have you go, un you know, not quite protected into an area because you're like, well, I have this. It's better than nothing. But it could, it could, with your false sense of security, have you put yourself into an area where now you're in very much danger because you're actually not protected at all, but you thought you have your better than nothing. You know, what I, you know what I mean? So natural rubber, there's a lot of chemical substances that will eat right through this and go straight at your actual thing. So I would recommend that you, if you have this, you spend a little time getting to know what will destroy natural rubber, what chemical substances will do that. Um, just as a, as, a, as a reference, you know, before you go tromping along, but basically this rubber would slide up over your, your shoe um, you also want to be careful not to force too much gently within the time permitted because if you rip this um, and this is very thin this is much thinner than the ones that we had in the military the ones we had in the military are probably I'm not kidding 10 to 20 times this thickness if if not more very very firm um, synthetic rubber like i couldn't tell you what it's actually made of but very firm thick um over boots and again in the, the ankle would come up uh, probably 12 to 14 inches i couldn't i can't remember all of it um, but this will give you protection you know for your feet and it's got some can you see the texturing there so that you're not sliding around on slick rubber on the ground that's good um, what this would, I mean, this would give you um, some good protection in, um, this looks like it's, I don't know if it's going to focus, looks like it's starting to split away over there already. Maybe when it flattens out, I don't know. I, listen, I'll, I'll be totally honest with you guys. I'm trying to think of what something like natural rubber would protect you against. Does it protect you against gasoline? or things like that, I, I can't remember. I, I know that it's a good barrier against like blood if you're in like a, a bloodborne pathogen environment. Biological stuff doesn't go through this. I know that. Uh, that's why hospital gloves used to be made out of rubber until all of a sudden latex allergies became a thing that we were aware of and now they're all made of synthetics. Um, I, I would have to look up what these things would be good for myself because I don't know. I just, I do not know. Um, so again, I'm gonna go with the, I'm gonna agree with the better than nothing crowd, but at the same time, be aware of what it does protect against so that you don't go with the false sense of security and go tromping into something that's going to eat and dissolve your rubber and then leave you in the middle of something completely like unprotected. But that's interesting, that's cool to have for a number of different things. Um, if nothing else, if nothing else, put it in your go bag right and then you have some waterproof foot protection because forget all this sea burn stuff um as a medic i'll tell you some of the most disgusting and just terrible things that that a troop has had to suffer with is like a bad fungal infection on their feet I, 
ew, gross. And at a certain point without, you know, being in the field, you could have to medevac somebody back because that will just eat away at, I don't want to get into it. Yeah, but just having something to keep your feet waterproof is awesome to have. Um, you know, if you if you don't have the ability to keep your feet dry and clean, sooner or later you're immobile. So these are these do have more than just that purpose. These are these are pretty damn good to keep just in your oh shit bag. So I like these. I definitely like these. We can talk about how good they are at their intended purpose at a later date. Okay. Moving on, disposable gloves. Um, so nitrile gloves, and this is what I was just talking about. So what is nitrile? Nitrile is a disposable, sorry, is a synthetic uh, rubber substitute. Um, they give you, so we went from uh, latex and then they had, um, what were they made of? I can't remember, but they just did not, they were loose. They didn't feel that they didn't grip your hand and give you the dexterity. They were floppy on your fingers. Um, and I can't remember what they were, but you can still find them in supermarkets and stuff and, and, and uh, you know, hardware stores and everything. It's an option you have out there. They're cheaper. If I remember it, I'm going to put it in text. If it's not in text, I just gave up and or forgot about it or something. Um, but it was, uh, they just, they were not good. They didn't let you do the fine work with your hands you needed to do. Nitrile came along and these give you, and these are not sterile in this kind of packaging. So um, if it was sterile, I would not take them out. But sterile is to protect, sterile gloves are to protect your patient in a germy environment like the operating room. These are, these are to protect you. So nitrile gives you the synthetic rubber to protect you if you might have a latex allergy, but it gives you a little bit of the stretch and it gives you that, that wrap around your finger so that it's like a second skin so you can be manually um, dexterous, I guess would be the word. I'll put one on. Actually, I won't put one on because I won't ruin these, but I actually have a box right here for doing all sorts of other stuff where I might need to wear a glove. So I'll waste one of mine. Um, so, like I said, you can see nitrile, vinyl, that's what I couldn't think of, vinyl gloves. But nitrile wraps around your hand like a latex glove would. And like I said, like a second skin feel. And it lets you get your, your hands and your fingers on things. The vinyl ones, they wear them in the food service in industry a lot too. They're, they're, they, they don't conform, they don't wrap around you, they don't hold on to you. And um, they just, they, they look different, they feel different. They don't, they don't let you get your hands on, you know, fine motor skills to do little things like nitrile does. But they're still very, very thin. They're very thin. Um, in um, cases where we were working, and this is, this, I'm speaking medically now, which would apply to the biological. Um, but you could also apply in a chemical kind of environment. These provide no nuclear protection at all. I don't know, alpha particles, let me break for a minute. Sorry guys, but education time. So in terms of radiation, you've got three different kinds of ionizing radiation. You're surrounded by radiation every day. When you eat a banana, you are ingesting a little bit of radiation. Swear to God, look it up. Potassium is a radioactive uh, isotope or yeah, is that what I'm saying? Anyway, bananas give you radiation. You're getting radiation walking around outside. Radiation is not an uncommon thing, but ionizing radiation is bad. Ionizing radiation is what tears your cell structure apart and um, it basically kills you in a horrific way. There's alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma particles, uh, and they have different energy levels, and that is what determines how deadly they are. Gamma particles, gamma radiation is the one that basically kills you. That's what, you know, that's what shreds your DNA apart and kills you and everything. Uh, you need lead, concrete, steel shielding to stop it because the amount of energy it has. Beta particles are, are in the middle. Alpha particles are stopped sometimes the, like by, by a sheet of paper. Alpha particles could be stopped by this, depending on the energy level. I completely lost my train of thought. So my point was these are not going to do you much good in, in any kind of nuclear anything. Um, and so this is not a case of better than nothing. In fact, this would be a, a very bad case of false sense of security leading you into a horrible, agonizing, radiation-related death. But these are good, of course, for biological stuff. Keeping, you know, a golden rolling ambulance and in the hospital. If it's wet and it's not yours, don't touch it.
understand that there are some what we call liquid agents, um, biological delivery devices, whatever. And some people fall into the trap where they're like, I'm wearing gloves, I'm protected. And then they take their contaminated gloves and wipe the sweat off their brow or scratch an itch somewhere. Or you got to remember that if only your hands are protected, you then have the duty of making sure you don't cross contaminate yourself by touching anything else or letting these gloves touch any of your other equipment that needs to be contaminated later. Sorry, guys, you know that I will lecture about this stuff uh, ad nauseum if allowed to. Uh, up here, we've got water purification tablets, and I don't think I'm... Nice, crazy. Mm. Up here, we've got water purification... Ugh. Up here, we've got water purification tablets. Chloroflock. I didn't make that up. Sounds cool, though. I'm going to start calling people chloroflox. Clarifies and disinfects naturally naturally polluted water, so let's keep that in mind with our theme here. It eliminates these things, but will it eliminate a man-made or uh, man-enhanced pathogen? I don't know, and neither do you. So, um, always happy to have water purification tablets, though. Always. Uh, it is enough to treat 30 liters, so it contains 30 sachets, sachets, you can pronounce it how you want, enough to treat 30 liters. So one little container does one liter, um, or 33 quarts. U.S. standard canteen size is a one quart canteen, by the way. I don't know if they still issue that out. I don't know, maybe they do. This over there has an NSN number, national stock number, which means this could be issued out to government personnel, military and government personnel. Sodium active ingredient is sodium dichloro S triazin E trione dihydrate. And I am not gonna try to pronounce that again. I don't know how that works. I don't know what that is. I honestly don't know. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say the package doesn't look fancy. The package looks like something you'd pick up um, in a budget section somewhere, but that doesn't mean the stuff doesn't work. It has an NSN number. It's made in South Africa. I don't know, maybe maybe that means something. Maybe that's good or not. Um, South African troops are used to fighting in very scrub brush austere locations. There's a little package and it's a powder and you pour it in. Um, I have no idea how well this works or doesn't. I've never used it. Maybe, guys out there, you can let us know in the comments if you have good experiences with this or bad. But listen, water purification is always important. However, I'm going to keep talking about our theme of NBC. What's just as important as purifying your water is making sure that in a uh, nuclear, biological, chemical environment, you keep your equipment clean and non-contaminated because you can have the cleanest water in the world and you've got a dirty, whether it's nuclear uh, particles, fallout, whatever, biological uh, or chemical contamination on your canteen and then you just drink that clean water through those elements and you have now put that contamination straight into your body. So keep your equipment as clean as the water inside. Cool. Let's flip the card over. The tape. Um, I love the tape, guys. I love the tape. I think it's very funny. Um, it's, but it, it is like straight up, it's it's packing tape. Uh, I don't know if this is meant to um, like mark off the area. Um, and it seems to, there we go. Maybe it's just the first part pulled off the marking. I don't know if this is like, if they intend this as a humorous, just kind of tape, um, or if it's to mark off an area. Um, it only says biological warfare. So this is supposed to be, you know, Seaburn. What about the other ones? I don't know. It's still funny tape. I would, I would, I would mark up. I would, I would wrap up boxes with this. I am not crazy enough to try to send that box through any kind of shipping service, though, because you know, you know, somebody's gonna over fucking react, and you're gonna get hauled into a little uh, brick room for questioning. Um, but it is funny tape. Uh, filler item, I think so personally but it's still a funny item. So there we go. What do they, let me let me just see what they say. A versatile tool for any repair, highly flexible, easy to tear and tr and tangle free. Yeah, so they, they know it's not, they know it's just like an added item. Okay, cool. 
Let's look for the disposable camo zip up coverall. Now this one looks very much like M81 Woodland or maybe possibly it's some take on multicam. I don't know. Does not resemble the pattern in this at all. I'm gonna open this bag so we can take a look. Um, and again, it, it's looking to me, well, it's not quite a Tyvek suit, but it's, this is like the same paper coverall scrubs that again, you, you wear over, it's not scrubs, scrubs is the wrong word, but it's the paper kind of coverall that you wear um, in a hospital, just as like the last layer of, um, just to protect, it doesn't so much protect you from stuff as it protects people in, in an ICU or in an emergency room from any other microbes that might be on your clothes. It's a semi-permeable barrier here. Um, it doesn't let stuff through, but it breathes a little bit. It's an odd camouflage. Reminds me of something from the East in the 80s, um, but it's a one-piece coverall. And if this gets wet, it's done. It's done. It is not going to survive that. From my experience, if it's similar to the medical stuff, you're going to have to tear it off and uh, replace it. I'm not sure really how good this is, especially if you're in an outdoors environment. It can tear easily. I don't, I don't want to prove that right now. It's got a very flimsy zipper there. Um, and this is a large, extra large. This is made actually, so this is made to fit right over your clothing. You don't strip down and then put this on. This is one extra layer um, to protect you. And, and again, something like this, depending on the source, remember when you're dealing with radiation, it's all um, distance, time, and cover. Those are the three things you're looking for. Distance from the source, time exposed, and cover between you and the source. Um, so this alone might protect you against alpha particle radiation. I don't know. It's not gonna do much against beta and gamma. It's not gonna do anything against gamma. Uh, I don't think a little fuzzy on, on beta because that's not really what they taught us about. It was about alpha and gamma. And gamma will fuck you and your couch. Um, <clears throat> alpha is pretty easy to deal with. And alpha decay is long. Anyway, never mind. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not going to go into all that. But um, this will keep your clothes clean. I wear this more like if I was painting a house. I don't know. I don't, I don't know specifically, this doesn't say anything on it, except dangerous suffocation for this bag. Um, this is once again, now, you know, I, I always tend to go look this stuff up a little bit more after I do the video, if it's something I'm unsure of. But, you know, right now, I don't know how effective this is for the theme of the box. I'm sure, I'm not saying it doesn't have uses. Look, if you're wearing, if you're wearing, you know, you know, bright street clothes or whatever, and then all of a sudden, bam, shit goes down and you want to throw this on so you're more subdued and you're, you know, in a wooded area, great, nice use for it. Um, just a top layer against, um, you know, whatever, uh, keeping germy particles off you, cool. Um, but again, I, I'm not sure exactly how they're, how they're, how they're playing this out. Yeah, it, it, it would, reduce the need for you to go through full contamination because a layer but uh, you know again full liquid stuff um and a lot of if we are playing the game of we were under attack or whatever um there's there's airborne there's powdered and there's liquid dispersal means persistent agents those ones that that attack and stay around a while and become a long-term hazard they're usual liquid they're usually liquid um, dispersed agents and so stuff like this it, it would it would end up absorbing those liquid agents and I'm not trying to guys I'm not trying to I'm really not just trying to show off all the stuff that I remember from years ago or or just trying to be like oh everything sucks I'm, I'm trying to give you things to think about as we look at this stuff you know what I mean like I'm trying to share those little tidbits that that I have learned through my years to kind of evaluate. I know that what a lot of people do is they don't subscribe to the boxes, but they watch the videos and they're like, okay, now I know I wanna buy that piece, that piece, and that piece, but not the rest. I'm trying to give you information that might help you, you know, make decisions like that, so. Okay, and again, this has no values, so I have no idea. Um, we're gonna look at the MREs next. And I know that this company, XMRE, 
does give you some really interesting choices. Um, MREs, we've talked about a lot on this, and I have a video where I show one MRE. Uh, MREs are great. I love MREs. In the military, you either love MREs or you hate MREs. There's nobody that's just like, yeah, they're okay. Um, they have gone, when I first got in the military, and yeah, this is me babbling again, they were in a dark brown package, looked like a dark brown garbage bag color. There were exactly 12 different menu options. That's what we call them, menus. So they actually said menu number up in the corner. It said menu number 1 through 12 and what was in it. And um, there was one breakfast one, I believe, which was like, maybe there was two. Uh, and the rest were just, you know, there was like beef stew was the best. Chicken stew was pretty good. Ham slice was gross. Tuna nuda casserole tasted like ham. Um, the 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 scrambled egg breakfast one was disgusting. Um, everybody had their favorites and everybody had some that were gross. And I'm going to open this up and I'll be able to seal it back up. But, you know, these days they have like Thai, Thai chicken with fried rice. I mean, they have vegetable uh, tortellini. They have, I, you can't even imagine all the different MRE options. And I'm a little bit jealous and I'm, and I'm a little bit crusty old man going, back in my day, Sonny, you got your 12 MRE flavors and you liked it. Um, there is a US Army Ranger who actually killed an insurgent in Afghanistan with a spoon, with an MRE spoon. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, killed him with a fucking spoon. United States Army, we will kill you with a spoon. Um, beverage base powder. I, I've gone over this again. You might want to skip this if you've seen it, but this is basically like Gatorade powder. Okay, that's what this is. And I've said this before too. There's a way that you're taught to specifically eat an MRE over the course. If this is the only food you have to eat for a whole day, um, and there are some schools in the U.S. military where you have an MRE to eat for one day or to eat for two days straight, and that's it. Um, they teach you how to do it, balancing the carbs versus the proteins and everything. These crackers, you can shingle a roof with these crackers if you want, if you need to. Chocolate chip cookie. Applesauce has always been an MRE, but never with this fancy ass package. This stuff is like a liquid. You could put this in an IV bag if you wanted. Um, what do we have here? Recovery trail mix with pretzels. That's a new one to me. And then, what is this fancy? Oh, that's the new heater. Roast beef with vegetables. This is your entree um, in an aluminum package because you put it in the MRE heater. This is so weird to me. The original MRE heater, the one that said place against rock or something. Funny story behind that. They were asking, so how do we write these instructions so that, you know, even the Marines can understand it. And they were like, just tell them to put it up against a rock or something. So the guy literally illustrated rock or something. Yeah. Um, so the original MRE heaters came pre-filled with the heating element and you just cut a hole and poured water in it. But I guess this one you have to, uh, you know why? Because they wanted people to stop making MRE bombs and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cover it more than that. You put it in here and then you can put this in. I, listen, I stopped heating my MREs when I was like an E3 because at a certain point they taste the same and I just want to eat. Now, if you are on a, on a convoy, you can 100 mile an hour tape, which is not the same as duct tape. It's better. You can you can duct tape, you can duct tape your entree to the underside of the hood of your vehicle and let it cook while you're driving. And then you, at the next stop, you can take it out and eat it and it's warm. You have to pre-plan that. Um, but otherwise, I just eat these things cold. And I'm gonna place this all back neatly in the pouch. And then you can do a whole bunch of things. You can read Ranger Rick's Digest and learn all sorts of things on what to do with your MRE bag. You can make a far better shoe cover out of an MRE bag than out of one of these things. You just gotta cut it over here. There's a number of things that you can do that they have discovered over time. Uh, different cool projects you can make with the MRE bag. We got two of them, chili with beans and roast beef. These are great. These these are actually, these are, I mean, I remember when you could get this for like $4.99, non-taxable in the commissary on base. And now that people are paying like 20 bucks for a single MRE, that's crazy to me. That's crazy. One item left. 
we have the double filter gas mask. <sighs> now this is really interesting to me because I have never seen a pro mask that just doesn't cover your whole face. <coughs> um, so a KN95 filter, which is basically an N95 made in China. And I'll tell you what, this looks remarkably almost, this is, this is basically the Chinese version, completely Chinese letters, of the respirator that we wear in the shop when we're doing Cerakoting stuff. It looks exactly like it. This is not... Okay, so I'm going to tell you. I'm going to put this one together. So the N95 will give you some protection from some biological stuff. Viral bacterial elements, sure. Some chemical stuff, sure. But... Um, the... Man, this is a little crazy here. When they go, they, you can figure out who they are. I'll let you ass assign the they-ness. Nobody creates new bioorganisms in a lab, okay? What they do is they take existing ones and they enhance them and they work on them and they make them worse. They, um, they make them in a, a way these don't even lock, they do, kind of. They make them in a way where they're more resistant to treatment, where they thrive and multiply better, where they, uh, yes, can, can be smaller than the average bear. So this is a, this is a like commercial, I don't think that this is, I don't think that this is gonna protect you very well in an actual NBC environment. I can't even get this one to lock on. I mean, I have pictures on Instagram of me wearing this exact same thing. I can't even get this one to go on. And you saw how easy the one went on? The other one's supposed to go on. It's supposed to go just like that. There are bioorganisms that they cultivate specifically to fit through standard type filters. Um, I'm not gonna get into the whole biological warfare and stuff but here but here's the the thing about chemical and biological warfare is it, your face is exposed things can get in your eyes um and yes they and then they give you this so we've got we've got the mask and then we've got this and I've never seen this. Does this connect to this somehow? Well, I don't know how this goes. They make it look like it connects, but I don't think it actually does. I think you're just supposed to wear these goggles. And these don't have any venting. Okay. On top of this mask. And then all of your skin is exposed. I'm not going to comment on that. Better than nothing? Yes. For sure. Especially where breathing is concerned. And I can attest to that the hard way. Concerning all the burn pit contamination and the respiratory shit I'm going through right now. But again, false sense of security? Could be. Definitely. Um... You know, a completely enclosed pro mask is made the way it is for a reason. When we are talking about, we're not even talking about nuclear. <laughs> this is gonna help you in a case of nuclear stuff. Might prevent you from breathing some contaminated, because alpha particles, if you breathe them in, forget it. They are gonna, they're gonna wreck you. Um, there's no shielding then between you and them at all. But if you are dealing with, um, you know, any any anything else, chemical, biological, and again, liquid agent forms, or even vapor agent, your skin is all exposed. You might have a hood on, you might have gloves, you might have this oversuit on, but your face 
is all exposed in this thing. There's gaps. Because I wear this mask. I wear the real version of this mask in the shop. I know what it covers. I know what it doesn't. This leaves gaps around the sides and everything. You're... I get it though, it's compact. Maybe it'll get you the hell out of Dodge. Maybe you could decontaminate, but still, I personally would not trust my life to this. I trust it in the shop to filter out the chemical particles, not chemical warfare particles, but the chemical contaminants involved in seracoding, you know, hydrographics, the spray gun, the, the activator, um, you know, the one hit wonder base coating the things we do industrially in the shop. I would not trust this to protect myself against actual chemical biological warfare. Not, not for one second. But better than nothing, we can go on that premise in a very short term. So I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So that is the box. I, I respect the attempt and I see the logic in this and I get it. And I think a lot of this is based on better than nothing, but know your limitations. Let's go with that. Better than nothing, but know your limitations before you rely on it. So I'll tell you what, guys, since this is already fairly long, what I will do is I'll do the, the knife of the month as a separate video. And you guys can check it out if you so choose um, and see what it's all about. Um, but let's hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me about better than nothing, but know your limitations? Because I know a lot of people often say that in videos. They're like, hey, it's better than nothing. Um, but I'm always concerned about the person that says better than nothing and then then takes that as a, a blank check to roll, you know, and just goes with it. So I'm going to I'm going to start the term better than nothing, but know your limitations. And let's see if I can get some agreement with that, because, you know, I, I just I worry about the folks that don't consider the all the things that go along with better than nothing. Um, and sometimes sometimes nothing is better than crap, you know, because at least with nothing, you're more cautious. I don't know, but that's my thought. So what do you guys think of this box? Favorite items, least favorite items. So thank you guys very much for joining me. Can't wait to see what you think of the box. I'll get to doing the knife of the month in a separate vid right after this is done. And remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome. And I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back again real soon.